Welcome to the Points in the Paint podcast, everybody. Stadium's at number one NBA podcast. Ben Wittenstein. Zach Badger House. And I'm always in the house. You can follow us on Twitter with our names. Exactly mm-hmm. the same as our Twitter handle. You can get the podcast wherever you get your podcast, wherever it may be. Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, online, wherever. <laughs> wherever you get your lovely podcast. We're also on YouTube. So yes, YouTube. Go, go see our lovely shining faces, though. But Zach, how are you? Decent now, you know, st- rough stretch over the weekend. You know, catching, feeling better, feeling healthy. Yeah, f- uh, catching COVID and whatnot. But, you know, we're right back to where we're supposed to be. You Tested know? negative and Tested you're staying negative, positive. And I'm staying positive. I like that. <laughs> there you go. I like that. Staying ne- uh, Tested negative, staying positive about it. You love it. And you got a lot of time to watch NBA at least. Oh, yeah, always. Sick or no, sick or no sickness, you know, good health, no good health. That TV always will say NBA. <laughs> that's, that's true. There you go. Make it a shirt. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. A lot of stuff happening in the NBA the past week. Uh, we could start, as we always do, with one big thing OBT. of the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you put this in quotes. Yes. Kind of what I get paid to do. Yeah, you said I like that, that quote. One. Yeah, I like that quote. Kind and of that what I was, get paid to do. That was after the Devin Booker game. Okay. Following his press conference. Basically, after he dropped the, what, 40, 40 piece. And the Phoenix Suns, by the way, they've won five in a row. So yeah. let's just get that right out the way. You know, Devin Booker's leading his team with not Chris Paul. He's been out with injury. And, you know, post game after dropping 44 points, Devin Booker flat out said, it's what I get paid to do. So that yeah. brings me to the question, Ben. These guys go out here and they have terrible games. Yep. They go out there and have 17, <laughs> 19 points. Yeah, right. Under then, 20. Then what do you say? Because that's not what you get paid to do. So no. in a situation like that, you know, what do they say then when they're having poor games, you know, they poor say, performance? Here, here's your money back, taking it out of my salary. I'll give, no. it, I'll give you the money back that you're paying me. Because <laughs> I, I don't think that's what's going to transpire. No, being. I don't think so either. I, I think, I mean, players are allowed to go through tough stretches, absolutely. Yep. But when you're a guy like KD, when you're a guy like Devin Booker, when you're the face of the team, when you're expected to come in every single night and score at least 20-plus points, probably 25-plus yep. points, you can't have too many bad games. And then once the team starts to suffer because of it, it's gonna that's gonna be on you. That's on you for not playing up to your potential. And so that's a good thing that Devin Booker went out there. He's been playing well these last five well. games. 27 a game, seven what, about seven rebounds, five assists. And it just should take it out to the east. Beat the Kings, too. The Northeast definitely beat the Kings. Man, we couldn't like the beam, but that's nah, all right. Couldn't like the beam. That's all right, though. But just to take it out to the east being and Kevin Durant and KD. Man, that man is a menace on offense. And yes. so I just felt like he fit into that that quote that Devin Booker said in terms of this is kind of what I get paid to do. And Kevin Durant, man, let me be the first one to tell you Unreal. absolutely, sir. That is what you get paid to do. What did he do the other night, Kevin Durant? Kevin Durant, uh, 45 points? 40, Unbelievable. 45 piece wing. Down, I mean, man. if you're, again, if you're looking for a bet, if you're looking for any player prop, Kevin Durant over points is never the wrong way to go. Sometimes. You know, if you ask some of my friends, they'd be disappointed they in get Kevin him on, Durant. On the wrong days. <laughs> yeah, on the wrong day. But I had to defend KD when he was he fell short of his point total a few weeks ago. I, I thought I told them, like, listen, Kevin Durant went out there and scored 25 straight. For 17 games, 25 plus points. And technically it was 26. It wasn't even 25. But he didn't score under 26 points being for at least the first 17, 18 games. Then he had like a, like a game with like 18 points. Then this is the killer right here. So my friend, one of my good guys, shout out to Mace. He had a player prop where he only needed KD to score one three on his little parlay. So KD only attempted one three. He missed. But he still had like 28 points, man. Oh, my God. That's that's when you're like, I'm going to stop betting for a couple of days. That's when you're like, I'm done. But that's, you know, the thing with KD, and I think it's impressive. I mean, did you see the video of him on, on Twitter yesterday? Uh, defender was in his face. He just started laughing and drove right by him. It's, like, right. That, it's like that type of thing like you were talking about. It's just it's practice for him at this point. I He's playing yep. chairs. He, he, there's no one in the league that's going to be able to stop him consistently. <laughs> He can get to the basket. He can get his shot wherever, whenever. He is as close as we have right now in this league to unstoppable. He really is. It's ridiculous, honestly, because it's like, like you said, no matter what's in front of him, no matter who's in front of him, it just looks like he's out there practicing. Like he got a chair out there and he's just straight drill work. And that's why I like KD. I do and I don't sometimes. Because sometimes he can be a little he could be a little passive. But when he gets into that aggressive mode like he was the other night and against the Pacers, they go out there. And then my biggest thing, too, being 
is how efficient he was. 14 and 19. That means you went out there and dropped 45 points without even attempting 20 shots. Under 20 shots, it don't get no more impressive than that. That's like yeah. 79%. Yeah, it, it's it, his efficiency is unbelievable. His ability to make shots from everywhere is unbelievable. He's just he's an unbelievable player, and I, I hope we are able to just watch him night in and night out. And appreciate him. And appreciate him, and, and he stays healthy. You can't say the same for some other guys. I mean, he, yeah. he's staying healthy so far this year. He's kind of worked his way through some – insane stuff that the Nets have gone through this season yeah. and he's just playing he just his go game. Out there, just go out there. I'm just playing basketball. It's unbelievable. I'm just here to play basketball. And I know you mentioned Phoenix. Phoenix winners of five straight and I was going to put this in the next segment but I figured since we brought it up let's talk about it because we have some teams now uh, you know slow starts. I'm not going to say Phoenix had a slow start but it seems that people weren't paying attention to a lot to start the season right. because they were bad or just they were a little slow. Golden State's another one of those teams. Okay. Seven and three in their last ten. Mm -hmm. Um, Steve Kerr is getting this team together. Once again, Steph Curry has been great. 30-plus point games over that 10-game stretch. They're eighth in defensive rating. This okay. is a team that seems like finally they're figuring it back out. They're figuring out how to be champions again. See, you mentioned Curry. And, you know, even when they were playing bad, he was playing extremely well. People have him as an MVP candidate, which that's something I can't fathom because off the strength of really being, they're bad. And I don't think you should be – in the MVP conversation, if your team is well, I don't think not currently good. they're they're not good, but I don't think in a situation where you have other players playing well or playing better or in sure. the top three in the in the standings or wherever they're at, whether it's East or West, then there's more options in terms of that. But just to mention the Warriors for a quick second, you mentioned Wardell. I'm going to take it a step further and say that Clay's getting his groove back. If you if you were able to read Zach Impressive Six, he is this past week. That's something I talked about. Clay Thompson getting his groove back. The month of November, he averaged 20 points a game. He shot over 45% off 11, off 11 three-point attempts. So that's pretty good. That's about four and a half threes a game, Ben. Yeah. So, you know, he's saying, starting it, to feel himself He's again. starting to feel himself again, yeah. growing that confidence. I think the biggest key for Clay Thompson will be the defensive end as we get further and further into the season. Yeah, 100%. I mean, he once he can get – if he can get back to his defensive self, I mean, that's a really good player that you got. Once again, a guy who can hit some threes. Mm -hmm. You can rely on, like, the old Clay Thompson. And a guy who can play defense on the other end of the court. I mean, that's – if the Golden State Warriors can get that, we know Steph's been doing his thing. You can get that extra Klay Thompson added right, in there. Right. And finally, you kind of – you got a stew going at that point. You got a little <laughs> bit of a stew working out for you. Uh, some other things. Uh, Jeremy Grant's playing well. 44 in the Garden. Yeah, 44 in the Garden. Did you see that on Friday night? Friday night. I missed that one, but I did see Anthony Simons. Anthony Simons 38. had 38. And so I love Anthony Simons. I know. That's, that's why I had to add that in there because they both went out there being and scored 38-plus points, and that was also in Zach's impressive six that that was the first time ever in NBA history that two players, a duo, walked into MSG, Madison Square Garden, and put on such a performance like that, 38-plus points. First time in NBA history, Ben. That's kind of impressive. <laughs> it's not kind of impressive. That that's, impressive. that's really impressive. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the thing is, is like, Anthony, he's going he's going to be a star. Yeah, he really he's a budding star. A star. He's a budding star. Um, and, and watching him and Jeremy kind of do their thing, that was a great pickup also, by the way, for, for the Yeah, for off season. I think it worked out for both parties and the Detroit Pistons too. 100%. And, and the Trailblazers, when they get Dane back, are going to be fun and dangerous. They need Dame to be, you know, healthy for the rest of the season. Right. But it's good for them to know that Dame's out. If Dame goes out again, Anthony Simons steps up now. And it used to be, you know, you'd maybe see Dame be out for a little bit. Anthony would have a one or two games where he'd be really good. But now it's just consistent. The man can score. He can score from anywhere. He can shoot threes from anywhere. And he loves to shoot threes from anywhere. That's the thing. It's not like he's good at it, but he is willing to pull the trigger. So – I, Portland is in a good spot, which is interesting because, you know, a year or two ago, you're like, this team needs to blow it up. The core is not working. Got to do something else. And they've really maneuvered in a great way to get the, the right personnel that works with Dame and that works for the team and that complements him well. And they're a good team now. Yes. They're fun. And there wasn't really too many dramatics either being in terms of like the exiting of CJ McCollum mm -hmm. because, you know, they were that was kind of the writing on the wall for them in it terms was. of whether or not they were going to blow up the team. But one of the pieces that they were considering was C.J. McCollum. They moved on from him. But it wasn't really a bad taste in your mouth on either party in no. terms of C.J. or the Portland Trailblazers. It was time. You know, and so you kind of get that replacement in Anthony Simon for him in terms of production, younger, shoots the ball with, with a lot of confidence, just like C.J. can able to control the tempo and dictate the game when, when Damian Lillard's out. Then you got Jeremy Grant, who's playing lights out on the wing it. position, points, going out there and dropping buckets, playing with confidence. Nurkic, I love me some Nurkic because he'll go out there at any 
any given night and give you a 20 and 10 game. Yeah. So you love to see it for the Blazers, and they're playing good defense. So shout out to Chauncey Phillips. Yeah, good. Honestly, good Good for the Blazers. They kind of seem to find themselves, and they're, and they're right in the middle of the playoff race at the moment. I know it's a little early, but, little you know, early. they're, they're <laughs> you know, number six in, in the West right now. What's trending? What's oh, yeah. going on? I was going to put the Golden State Warriors here, but that, you know, we had to talk about them. So. Well, they were trending up. They're tra- they are, yeah, they're trending up right now. This other team, though, they're trending down, Ben. Yeah, and we were high on them and, well, a couple weeks ago, yeah, and now the Utah kinda, Jazz. Kinda fading away a yeah, little bit. The music's off key, should we say, <laughs> yeah. the Utah Jazz. No they jazz are, music uh, in Utah. Yeah, it's rough. Two and eight <laughs> over the last ten. Five losses in a row. Yeah. You know, they started ten and three. They and, did. And, yeah, they played the, the Bulls on, on Monday night. Uh, and, you know, watching that game, they were your... holding on to the ball. Okay. Turnover City for the Utah jazz and they look like they really were struggling for whatever reason now i mean we can ask the question was that a fluke was there start a fluke and mm. it's starting more and more to look that way and i could ask the same question of you of the sacramento kings okay and they've looked uh, not as good as how they how did they when started? the season started so i mean are we saying are we seeing the jazz are we seeing the kings are two teams are they fluky with the way they started okay or is this just kind of a downturn now the teams have kind of started to take them more seriously after no one, no one thought the Jazz were going to do anything. No, that's no true. Teams were, Victor you know, Wimbayama hardcore sweet prepping. Stakes. Yeah, no, no teams were hardcore prepping for the Jazz or the Kings. And now that they're good, teams are starting to pay a little bit more attention, and we're starting to see them falter a little bit. Just a little bit. I think the Sacramento Kings are still competing at a high level, at least. You know, they're fighting in games because I, I they are. Think, they're fun. Yeah, you know that game last night that I had saw between the Kings and the Warriors. Uh, I mean, the Kings and the Suns. Yeah. Kings almost won the game now. They They almost won the game. They fought back. And I was really surprised because they were down like seven with like 90 seconds left. And they they cut it to one possession, had an opportunity to even win the game. So kudos to them. They're still finding ways. It's another young team that are still finding ways to win close games. Right. You know, Kings still have to figure that out. Now, on the other side, on the flip side, this other team, the Utah Jazz, Lloyd Markin is still playing well regardless of what. Jordan Clarkson is still playing well regardless of what. Yeah. They may miss Mike Conley. Yep. He's going to be out for a few weeks. So that may be one of the things that is going to deter deter them from being at the top and they're going to start to fizzle out. They need Sexton that guy. off the bench was awesome. Sexton off the bench was pretty good, and he yeah. has played well. But they need a guy who's going to be able to control, be a little more in control of yes. the offense. You know, and that's kind of, you need that. If you're going to have a team of young people, Conley's yep. the perfect guy to Not get rattled. compliment them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and really lead them through games. And if he's going to be out, Sexton's great. He's he fun. Is. But he's young, and you had him coming off the bench. It was a great mismatch off your bench. Yes, so he was. You lose, you lose a lot with that Conley injury. Uh, Jason Tatum, another player that's trending. You bet just, his point total over last night. And he did hit. And, a half, and absolutely, he had 35. There you go. Um, he's great. So tell <laughs> me how you feel. Jason Tatum's been great. He's, yeah, tell I me mean, how you feel. As long as Boston continues to play well, Tatum is going to be an MVP candidate. For okay. Sure, for sure be an MVP candidate. Will he win MVP? I don't know. I don't know if I mm. even know who's going to win MVP anymore after Jokic won two in a row and maybe Embiid should have won it. So I, I think we it's way, way too early to make All any right. conversation with the MVP, but he is making the case for an MVP, just like Shea Gilgis Alexander is. But, the, the you know, the Thunder are the Thunder. So the thunder out of Thunder. But the Celtics are number one in the East. You know, this is this is a really, That's really damn at. good team. So yep. you have the best player on the best team in the East playing really well, scoring 30-plus points. It's hard to say he's not going to be an MVP candidate, and there's a big reason why the Celtics have been so good. Jason Tatum. I even take it, I'll take it a step further, Ben. I'll take it a step further. Just off the strength of how well Tatum's played, they not only got the best record in the East, they got the best record in the NBA, Ben. Yeah. Best record in the NBA. He's leading the pack, regardless of – I look at it like this. You a fan of pop music? Uh, Yes, I am. Top okay. 40 for me, baby. Okay. You so, know me. That's so, all I listen so to. So you're a fan of top 40, you know, well, Katie the popular. Perry. Okay, well, I'm going to take you back. T-Swift. Like late 1990s, early 2000s. NSYNC era. Maroon 5. <laughs> in sync, in oh, sync. I'm going way back. Yeah, you so go. you tell me who is the most important person in in sync? Uh, that is a fantastic question. And as I talk about that, let me Google it. And I'm going to just go ahead see. and tell you. Yeah, go ahead. In my opinion, it was Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake. It was JT. So, okay. JT, Jason Tatum. <laughs> let me just tell you this right now. <laughs> huh. The Boston Celtics Interesting. are in sync. But they ain't nothing without JT. Jason that Tatum. really took you a long way to get there. I respect that. That was impressive. But Jason, yes, listen, Jason Tatum, 
he doing his thing, man. He leading the way, He's like in sync, like just Timberlake for in sync. <laughs> That's all I'm oh, does saying. Does that mean it's gonna something's gonna happen? They're gonna break up eventually? No, they already lost their coach, so they broke up. That's a yeah. little. Make it back together twenty years right later. Yep. <laughs> uh, interesting. No, I I do you, listen. He's the reason the Celtics are so good. He's the reason they've been able to stay together after losing Ime Udoka and, yep. and having to go through coaching changes. They've been great. And and, and Jalen Brown was out last night, and Tatum still 30, 35 what he, points. Did what he's supposed it's to do. Unbelievable. Yep. It's Boston unbelievable Celtics, they are. what, number one offensively, top ten defensively in yeah. terms of rating? They're so just that's what you love to see. They, they just have to finish it out. Go to finals and finish it out. Ooh, you, you go, see, that's, I, like, I like the reason why you said that. Can they that. take down the Bucks? And I know why you said that is because they've been this team that was, that was once the young, young, the young dogs. You know, when Tatum and Brown were like 21, 22 years of age yep. with Kyrie on the team, and they were a young bunch. But now they've gotten their second contracts. Mm-hmm. You know, they've developed a lot of talent around those two guys yep. with Derek White and getting Al Horford to vet. And so I can see why you're saying, like, okay, maybe it is time for this team to finally reach that pedestal to get right back to championship promise. Yeah, I mean, you would, you would hope so. And honestly, the team's – that have given them issue in the past. The Heat are beatable, for sure. Right now, absolutely. For sure, by the Celtics. Uh, the Bucks are going to be an issue, 100%. Bucks are back to being the Bucks. Giannis is back to MVP Still form. no Chris Middleton, which is playing crazy. so well. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to say, are the Bucks better without Chris Middleton? But it's interesting that they've played this well without him. Yes. And when he comes back, it's not like it's going to take a while to get the chemistry back together because they've all played with each other for so long. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. But right. It'll be interesting to see how, how the Bucks handle getting Chris Middleton back. 76ers, uh, you know, another team that could possibly stand in the way. Joel's back. Joel's back. Joel's looking good. But as a team, I think the Celtics could handle the 76ers pretty well. Okay. So they really are. I, the pa- Uh-oh. Wait, wait. Cleveland. Ooh. Nah, how do you feel about that? I, if this was two weeks ago, I would have been like, all right, maybe they've got a little bit of an issue with Cleveland. But Cleveland is – They kind of fizzled uh, out. They haven't been hot. Like, like yeah, they they've been – they haven't been as fun or as dominantly good as we saw them Yeah, about start five of the five season. in their last ten, I believe. They're still – yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they've plateaued a little bit. They're still fun. They're still good. They, have, they still have the talent. So maybe as the season goes on, they're going to be growing more as a team. But right. I mean, right now, man, the Celtics have it's just the Celtics been world in the East. un-freaking believable. In Milwaukee. Yeah, and Milwaukee. Milwaukee's fun. Bucks are fun. The the NBA Finals goes through Milwaukee or Boston. Boston in the much. East? Okay. Yeah. Stat of the week. We have two yeah. stats of the week. Oh, we do? Two stats of the week. Oh, wait. You have the first one. What's the okay. first one that you so have? So the first one is kind of putting you on the spot. This one. Yeah, like no, I saw this. You saw this. You're like, hmm, I wonder what this is. Yeah, I, I want you to guess. So. This young individual, he's a young man. He's, yes. still, he's still on his second well, he's year. on his second contract. He's on his second, second contract. contract. So he's been in the league maybe three, four years. Big guy too. Oh, it's a big guy. Well, sort of. Oh boy. <laughs> so this what two, conference? Uh, it's the West. Okay. So two thousand five hundred and twenty four total points are the most points through hundred career games since MJ, since Michael Jordan. We in Chicago since Mike, and Mike scored you know twenty seven hundred points, two hundred twenty one to add them all. Okay. First hundred games. So who's that player? Now the hint is this team has won six of the last eight in the West, and they started six and six. Started six and six. They They've started six, six and six. Of their won last last, six of their last eight. And it's a big man. It's kind of a big man in the West. And his team. He's a big fella. I would say he's a big man. He's, he's a, a big, big fella. fella. <laughs> Interesting. He's a big fella. And he's a he's a younger guy. Mm-hmm. Huh. Now that's interesting. Is it? I got him puzzled. Uh, I got him puzzled. <laughs> huh. Well, I I know like. I was thinking Luca. Okay, that's a very good guess. I'm not gonna lie, that's a solid a, guess. He's a chunky guy. He's like kind of guess. a solid, thick boy. Yes. But his team started out better than six and six, and yes. now they've probably gone six and six for a while. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of some of these guys. You know, like he's de- okay. I'll give you another hint. He's sponsored by Jordan too. So just like Luca's sponsored by Jordan, he's another young guy sponsored by Jordan. And he's a young guy because yep. it's only been 100 games, right? Yep. He's only played 100 games, so yep. this has got to be what his second. Second season, third season, it's third season, maybe fourth, maybe fourth. So he did not play a lot then to start. He hasn't played a lot, absolutely. Oh, is it Zion? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, look at that light bulb. There you go. Hey. Hasn't played a lot, but has been in the league a while. Zion Williams. That's impressive, man. That He's is impressive. Good. He's yeah. been fun. I was reading something too about Zion that um, he needs to get to the line more, and officials need to start calling fouls. I can, on I can see Zion, that. But, and uh, he he has not been getting to the line now. I, I'm watching him play. I don't know what else differently he can do because mm-hmm. he's still he's physical down low and he gets physical with guys and he's just a big mound of a person. 
So I don't know why he's not getting these calls, and I don't know how much more physical he can play without it being an offensive foul, but he needs right. he needs to get some more of these calls because he has not been getting to the free throw line nearly enough. Yeah, a, guy, a big guy like him, 280-some some pounds, give yeah. or take. No, he definitely could get some more free throw action. I so he, he, he has scored the most points by a player through 100 games since Michael Jordan. Since MJ. That is crazy. Ooh, wait, now, All you right. say you got one. You, you ready got for this one? Of the week? You ready for this one? Oh, boy. This one I saw on Twitter uh, tweeted by a, uh, a ESPN reporter. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to see if I can find that tweet. Okay. Oh, yeah, Brian, Brian Windhorse. Brian Windhorse. That's who it was. You ready for this? Uh, I'm ready. Why is going to be out tonight as we record on Tuesday, November 29th. Okay. This is the 107th <laughs> time in the last 112 <laughs> games that Kawhi Leonard is out. He is the definition of. What the hell? <laughs> I don't know about that, but he is the definition. Bro. Of, I ain't playing today. <laughs> Bro, five games. How much money he make? Oh, I'm way now, too much. Now, I don't be checking people's pockets. More than me. You know that ain't the, absolutely. And I don't be checking folks' pockets, this and that, you know, being. But I just feel like if I'm being, a, if I'm going to just keep it real. One second. I'm just keep it real. You make all that money. Buddy, Ain't no way, Steve play. Ballmer. Like, bro, you should be sweating every time you write that check. Yeah. Like, are you gonna play? Like, just give me some minutes. Give me something. Or like, give some of the money back. Honestly, 107 <laughs> missed games out of 112. Good finesse in the you, league, Kawhi, buddy. Like, what do you want, man? You want people to carry you literally while you're on the court and just like <laughs> shuffle you over to the ball? I, I don't understand. Yeah, no, he, I, is, he is so infuriating at this point. Like, I understood him sitting out. Some games. I think, name, I think they named a new injury too. Like it's ankle now. Yeah. So it's yeah. no longer the knee. He it's played the a ankle. bit, then he got hurt. Retire at that point. Like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> you man? said it. Stealing I ain't saying <laughs> like, you, you read my if mind. You can't but you play said if it. your body's breaking down. You've won a championship. You've done a great job. You've cemented a legacy. Facts. Retire. Don't hurt yourself more. Like, Don't hurt the team more. It's not like he's not a winner. He's a winner. But wait. Oh, let me ask you this. Okay. Because this is crazy. I thought about this over the weekend. And you tell me what you think, Ben, because this is really hilarious. Oh, no. This is a serious question, too. This is real serious. Okay. Do you believe Kawhi Leonard truly wants to play with Paul George? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't want to, like, get in. I don't want to, like, speak for him. But that's interesting because... I mean, how many, game, how many games have they played together oh, at this point? Goodness. Who not knows? a lot. Not a lot. Not you can probably ton. count them on one hand. Maybe, maybe, maybe two. two hands. No, it's probably know, two. It's maybe probably three two. hands. Uh, maybe uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's just like, I, I don't know. Something's go, something's weird with him because you, you're missing 107 games out of 112. What? That's a lot. Like, man, what what are you doing here? What, you're getting paid tens of millions of dollars. But what if he don't want to play with Paul George? Like, what he if that what like, so like, I, Listen, PG. You're great. I don't want to play with you. I want to. I want to be myself again. I, I don't know. I don't know what his it's issue crazy. would be, but it's like, dude, come on, man, <laughs> figure it out. It's so infuriating. We could have like a Kawhi watch, just like play a game, Kawhi. Come on, play a game. Let's, Do listen. something. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you for sure. Let's go on to the on the hotline. Yes. Voicemails, text, Twitter, IG, Facebook. You can find us everywhere. You can contact us anywhere. Uh, Facebook's a great place. I know you're getting a lot of these from Facebook. So go yes, on Facebook. Yes, I am. Facebook has been hot. Uh, leave a voicemail, 773-273-9088. We have Mario yes. from Dayton, Ohio. Tyrese Halliburton, he says, is the best pure point guard. And I imagine he means just like in the league right now. <laughs> Not oh, yeah. all time. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. Tyrese, the best pure point guard. Um, right now? Shoot, you tell me what you think, Ben, because I know how I feel. <laughs> it is a – it's not the worst take okay. that, that I think we have gotten or that I have ever heard for okay. basketball. Right. I would give the rest of the season just to see because he has been having a really good stretch, Tyrese. Mm-hmm. He's had a couple bad games here and there recently, but he's overall he's had a really good stretch. Assist-wise, as you mentioned on last week's show, bet his assist prop over. I mean, the guy is unbelievable yes, sir. passing the ball right now, and he's only gotten better. You could make the argument he is one of the better pure point guards, but I think I would love to see him cons- like do this consistently for the, okay. rest, of the, the rest of the season. But I, you know, listen, I don't think it's the wrong take. Right, best pure point guard. Mm-hmm. It's not. You're not off. You're not off. I'm trying to think like who else you could really put out there right now. Chris Paul's hurt. Chris Paul hurt. So this is you know I totally pure agree with Mario. Guard? Mario, I agree with you playing Tyrese Hallenburton. Easily. You're going to keep betting that assist over prop? I don't care if he get the 14 and a half. Yeah. Take it. He scores and he gets double-digit points, double-digit assists. 18, it's hard to argue with it's that. It's like 18 a night, 18 points a night, bro. Yeah. 14 assists. He is currently the only player in the NBA being leading with double-digit assist total 
in the NBA. He's the only person averaging double di- double digits in assists. Yeah, so, it's interesting because you know I, you can make a case like Luca is a do- is a pure point guard, but he's not he's really pure not point guard because he's so ball dominant. Ball dominant. Yeah, he, he can get double digit assists anytime Easily, he wants. Right. But he's such a unique guy. He's ball dominant, but he also is kind of like a big man at times. So he's not. He's like a pure point guard is just part of his role. Mm-hmm. So he's not that like Tyrese. He can get a shot. He right. can create his own shot. He can right. get to the basket. But he's right. also, as we saw, game winner last night against Lakers. The man can pass. I'm, I'm glad you saw it. Glad yeah, you caught winner. it. Because who, who, yeah, the, the little homie, I don't even know who sh- I don't even know who shot the ball, Ben. <laughs> no. I don't even know who Net shot Hart. it. But I, but I know who passed it. Yep. <laughs> Tyrese, Tyrese. Helen Burton yeah. passed it. Found the right man, right open man. He got that Dimer badge from 2K on Hall of Fame, as far yeah. as I'm concerned, already. Year three in the league, averaging over 10 assists a night. Ben, I get excited when I talk. Tyrese Hallenburton because he's, he's won me a couple dollars just yes. off his assist total. Like that assist total is money. They yes, try to geez. raise it up to eleven and a half. Like big dog still wasn't gonna bet it. Ben, I'm still gonna take it. I don't points <laughs> assist every single night. Points plus every assist. Night. Tyrese. Yes. Uh, we have Keon. Is that how you pronounce it? Houston, Keon. Texas. Keon, yep. Houston, Texas. Keon in Houston, Texas. All right. So he said Harden in Houston. He will never win a ring with, with? his play style because yeah. all he does is ISO. And Luca in Dallas, Luca is different. It's only a matter of time. So, are, are you uh, interesting? So he, so I guess the question was, why did Harden get more scrutiny for his style of play, but Luca gets more praise? I guess that was the question. Okay, so oh, okay, so he was saying when Harden was in Houston, people were saying Harden would never win a ring because of his play style, because yep. all he does is ISO. Yeah. And now with Luca in Dallas, he's different. People consider him different because, um, I will say this. Okay, let me let hear me say it. this. Put you on the, the Harden. <laughs> the Harden that we saw like last season, right, was not the Harden in Houston. Okay. Uh, because he, Harden's assist numbers. Okay. Just look at that. Harden's assist numbers, and I can I can try to bring it up, but I mean They're he he became a re, a much more passing became more part of his game. Mm-hmm. Um, once he left Houston, but he was passing in Houston too. He, he, he was passing about, in Houston. He's passing in Houston. I think. Let's see. So with the. After with the Rockets, uh-huh. he had one season where he averaged double digit assists. Nice. But for the rest of the time, it was seven and a half, seven and a half, eight and eight, a half, seven. Between seven and eight, maybe yeah. maybe one nine. Yeah, and it went up. 10. It went up. Twenty sixteen, it was eleven point two. Now okay. he leaves the Rockets. First season with the Nets is twenty twenty, and since then, the Nets, the Nets, seventy sixers. He has never averaged less than double digit assists nice. in a season. Okay. Okay. So if he was averaging double digit assists in Houston and putting up the scoring numbers, mm-hmm. you could make the case that he it was got- unfair to call him to call him like a bad player and they okay. couldn't win. But I think because he was Luca can give you a double double with his eyes closed. He can pass the ball, he can dish it out, he can score at every single level of the court. And Harden is pretty good at doing that, I think. Yeah. But I think Luca does it with such consistency that I, I can see why people are saying that now for Luca. With Harden, if he was again, if he was the 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 playmaker that he was with the Nets and the mm-hmm. 76ers, I think we can have it. And, and he was still getting that. Oh, you can't win with Harden because all he does is ice. So then I think it's unfair. But he wasn't as big of a passer as he was now. And Luca is a really good passer along with the way that he plays. So I would say that might be why. Okay. I think I'll take it a step further, Ben. I don't look at it in terms of the ISO versus non-ISO between Luka and Harden in terms of, you know, whether or not either one of them is going to win or not win. Because personally, okay, Keon, you're right. I will first and foremost, I'll say you're right about James Harden getting the scrutiny with his style of play. Mm -hmm. Now, on the flip side, I think Luka does get scrutiny but not because of his style of play, more so the usage rate that they have with the Dallas Mavericks with Luka Doncic. I think that's the biggest issue, being is that you can't really get to the finals being a top five guy in terms of usage rate or top three. I remember Candace Parker saying that once on NBA TV. Like, no player has ever done it outside of maybe once or twice. LeBron did it, I believe, in like 2016, and then I think there's one other player that's ever done it, reached the finals with the top five usage rate. And so I think that's the biggest question mark with Luka Doncic right now. Will they be able to get successful long term? the uh, Dallas Mavericks with him having so much having to do so much during the games yeah right now it's this season it's 37.8 percent is his usage rate which is extraordinarily high yeah he's rely a lot on Luka Doncic um but I, I don't know I mean they're they're very similar in a lot of ways right they now really yep. are 
They're different in some key ones, though, too. Like, if you're trusting any guard to go down and bump around with the big guys, I'm trusting Doncic more than I'm trusting Harden. And Harden was really good down low. But Doncic is, is unbelievable. In the league, down. also, I caught up with, you know, Harden style of play and drawing yes. the fouls and yes. things like that. So, yeah. But... And once the, the funny thing is, once they change that rule about the offensive foul and the defensive fouls, offensive guy can't stick his leg out a lot. Yep. He can't make contact. Free throw, what happened with Harden? His assist rate went down. ran up. He's like, it's I got to move the yeah, ball. Assist gotta, went up. Free throws went down. I got to start moving the ball a little bit. So I think that was kind of interesting. And Luca does the same stuff. You know, he, he does not to the extent that Harden did it, but he still does the same stupid sticking your leg out, trying <laughs> to get contact. You know, it's, 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 it is a very similar style of play. Um, but I, it isn't. It's an interesting you know, observation. Yeah, right. definitely interesting I observation. observation. I, I did, yeah. So we appreciate Keon in Houston, Texas, you know, for giving us that little yeah. that little dialogue right there. Yeah. That gave us the opportunity to have that conversation. So we appreciate you, Keon, in Houston, Texas. And always remember, folks, you can always hit us up on Facebook, on Twitter, or, uh, 773-273-9088. Absolutely. Line. You know, you can always do that. And that's going to conclude this edition of the Points in the Pain podcast presented by Stadium. I am Zach Badgerhouse. That was my main man, Ben Wynn. You can follow us on our respective handles, of course, social handles. You know that, of course. Yep. And you know, like we watch said before, on YouTube. Watch it has our YouTube. social handles on watch there. Watch that. Yeah, yeah. There got you a go. Graphic update. You gotta do. Got a little graphic update. You read about that, and so yeah, you'll catch us next week. But remember, always, always follow, listen, subscribe, rate, review the Points of the Pain podcast. You're here from us yes, next week.